Okay, so we are going to start off the two topics. One of them is the interest rate swaps and the other one of them is interest rate caller. So the first topic that I will be discussing is the interest rate callers. Uh, let's have a bit of a discussion that what exactly are the interest rate callers all about. Now, uh, first of all, let me just give you a bit of a guidance about this interest rate caller. You do have an idea that whenever we talk about the interest rate options. So with respect to the options, you have got, uh, you have got a choice, which is basically if you have got a call option, that's an option to buy something. When you have got a put option, you have got an option to sell something. But one thing that happens with respect to the option is the premium cost. Whenever we buy an option, what we need to do is that we need to pay the premium cost. And that premium cost is payable upfront. So irrespective of whether you exercise the option or whether you lapse the option, the premium cost is payable. The premium cost is payable. So generally speaking, a lot of organization who wish to hedge their risk using the interest rate options are usually concerned that they would have to pay the premium irrespective of whether they are gonna exercise the option or not. So what they want to do is that they want to avoid that premium cost. How exactly are they going to be avoiding that premium cost? Let's have a discussion about it. Basically, uh, these organizations, they go on, they create a caller hedge. These organizations, what they do is that they go on and they create a caller hedge. What's a caller hedge? The caller hedge is actually a simultaneous. I bet the caller hedge is simultaneous sale slash purchase of. I bet the caller hedge is the simultaneous sale slash purchase of the call and put options. It's the simultaneous sale and purchase of call and put options with an objective to reduce option premium cost. So how does this caller hedge is created? So let's just talk about it. For example, you are a borrower. You are a borrower. So as a borrower, your risk is that the interest rates are going to increase. So what happens is that a borrower, what he does is that he buys an interest rate cap. He buys an interest rate cap. The interest rate cap is an option that fixes the maximum rate. The interest rate option, uh, interest rate cap is an option that fixes the maximum rate. So let's say what you do is that you buy an interest rate cap at 12%. Is that okay? So what happens is that you buy an interest rate cap at 12%. Now what next is there? Generally, if you are going to buy an interest rate cap at 12%, so you would have to pay a premium for buying this. Maybe you pay a premium of 0.6% for this. Maybe you pay a premium for 0.6%. Now, what is this borrower going to do? If the interest rate exceed the 12%, then he is gonna exercise his option. But if the interest rates are below 12%, so he is not gonna exercise his option. He would allow the option to lapse. I repeat, he would allow the option to lapse. So first of all, if you are a borrower and if you have an interest rate cap, what are you going to do? You are going to exercise your interest rate cap when the interest rates exceeds the certain limit, the certain percentage for which you have a cap. If you've got a cap at 12%, if interest rate exceeds 12%, then you're gonna exercise your cap. Now. So think about it. Let's say if the actual borrowing was 10%, the actual borrowing was 11%, actual borrowing was 10.5%. Even if the actual borrowing was 11.9% or even if the actual borrowing was 12% or if the actual borrowing was 15%. In all these cases, what is gonna happen is you'd be paying a premium of 0.6%, a premium of 0.6%, a premium of 0.6% every year. 
should be paying a premium of 0.6%, 0.6%, 0.6% everywhere. In this case, the applicable rate would become 12%. So the resulting 12.6%, 10.6%, 11.6%, Eleven point one percent, so on and so forth. This is how the interest cost is going to be based. Point six percent for the premium is going to be a constant cost that you would have to continuously pay. Now, as an entity, you want to get rid of this point six percent. You don't want to pay this point six percent, or you want to reduce this point six percent cost. So, how exactly are you going to do it? So, the solution for it is to use interest rate collars. The solution for it is to use interest rate collar. Now, what is going to happen with respect to interest rate collar? This borrower, what he would do is that he would buy a cap. Let's say if he has bought it at 12% and he has ended up paying a premium of 0.6%. What would happen is that he would simultaneously sell a floor. What is a floor? A floor is an option that fixes minimum rate option that fixes minimum rate. So maybe he sells a floor to somebody, some X, Y, Z for 9%. Let's say he sells it to 9%. Now what would happen is that whom is he going to sell this floor to? He is probably going to sell this floor to somebody who is a depositor of money, who is actually a lender and who is expecting that the interest rates are gonna go down. Now think about it. For example, if he's gonna sell this floor, so he's probably gonna charge a premium. He's, maybe he charges a premium of 0.4% to the other party, to the counterparty. If he charges a premium of 0.4% to the counterparty, so what is gonna happen is that he actually bought an option by paying 0.6%. He sold an option by receiving 0.4%. Net is 0.2% is what he has. Net is 0.2% is the cost that he has. Now, how is this caller going to operate? This caller would actually mean that his interest cost is going to fluctuate between 12 and 9%. His interest cost is going to fluctuate between 12 and 9%. How? For example, if the interest rate goes up above 12%, let's say it becomes 13% it becomes 14%. So you, you as an entity, you would exercise your cap and you would end up paying 12%. But if the interest rate goes down to 8%, 7.5%, etc. So what would happen is that you may actually be borrowing at 8%, 7.5%, but the third party to whom you have actually sold the floor, they are actually going to exercise the floor. And when they are going to exercise the floor, resultingly what would happen is that your cost is going to get restricted to this 9% level. I bet your cost is going to get restricted to this 9% level. So your costs are going to fluctuate between 12% and 9%. And this is called a collar hedge. What was the major objective? The major objective was you wanted to pay 0.2%. You didn't want to pay 0.6%. You wanted to reduce the cost of the option what is it? You wanted to reduce the cost of the option print. Now, let's move a bit forward. Um, so basically what you can understand from the perspective of the borrower is that he's going to buy a cap. He's going to sell a floor. When he's going to buy a cap and he's going to sell the floor, so resultingly what would happen is that uh, he would have an interest rate caller and the purpose that he's going to be able to achieve is to reduce the interest cost. Now, similarly, if we think from the perspective of somebody who is a lender, so what would happen is a lender would buy floor. Let's say he buys floor at 8% and he pays 0.3% as a premium cost he may actually sell the cap at the rate of 12, 10% and he may charge 0.25% as an interest. Resultingly, he would be standing net at 0.05% as a premium and his interest income is going to fluctuate between 10% and 8%. How? 
if the interest rate goes down from 8%, let's say 7.5% or something, he's going to exercise his cap. He's going to exercise his floor. And he would get a minimum of 8%. But if the interest rate goes up, 10 up by more than 10%, let's say it's become 11% or what something. So what would happen is that the, the, the counterparty to whom he has actually sent he has actually sold these uh, caps. That counterparty is going to exercise because that counterparty wants to restrict its borrowing cost. So when it is going to restrict its borrowing cost, it's going to be 10%. So hence resultingly, the lender's interest income is going to fluctuate between 8% and between 10%. So if I could just sum up both of these, I could say that the borrower's caller The borrower's collar is going to be buy cap, sell floor. And you would remember when you are when you studied the OTC options that the borrowers they go for the put option. So you buy put and you sell call options. And when we talk about the lenders caller, the lender's caller is going to be buy floor, sell cap. And buy floor would actually mean that you are going to be, buy floor would actually mean that you are actually going to be buying the call option and you're going to be selling the put option. That's how it is going to be. So think from the perspective of the borrower and the lender that how the call option, how this caller hedge is going to operate from the perspective of both of them. Now let's move a bit forward and let's discuss further. We have got interest rate callers. We got to understand what the interest rate callers, uh, how do we deal with the interest rate callers? So let's just try to see this. It says LTREC is considering using the options market. It is 1st December. The exchange is quoting the following prices for a standard $500 three month contract. Contracts expire at the end of the relevant month. LIBOR is 5.25%. You've got a strike price available. The call options are available. The put options are available. If, we, if, if this is now 1st of December, and if you have got if you have got, uh, what does it say? It says illustrate the outcome of a caller with a put at 5.45% and the call at 5.25% if LIBOR in three months is 5.75%. So if we are talking about the three months time, so that means we are standing at 28th Feb. And when we are standing at 28th Feb, that means which are going to be the relevant options for us, the March options are gonna be relevant for us now. What is going to happen is that these strike price are quoted in terms of interest rate future as 100 minus R. So what are you going to do? You're going to write it down as 100 minus R. Let's say if I try to write them down in terms of percentage. So it's going to be 100 minus 94.35 gives you 5.65%. 100 minus 94.55 gives you 5.45%. 100 minus 95 point, sorry. 100 minus 94.75% gives you 5.25%. So what is the examiner saying? It says illustrate the outcome of a caller with a put at 5.45%. So what happens is that uh, you're actually uh, having a put at 5.45%. And you're having a call at this, this, this. So if you are a borrower, if you are a borrower, you would buy put and you would sell call. So when you would buy the put, the put has to be at 5.45%. The call has to be 5.25%. So what happens is the March ones are the relevant one. 
by put. Put at 5.45 percent. This one. Sell call at 5.25 percent. This one. Hence, resultingly, what would happen is that you as a borrower would actually be paying 5.45% interest. That's something that you have already decided you're going to pay. Plus, you would be paying 0.245% as the premium cost. And minus 0.008% is the premium for the calls that you're going to get. So resultingly, what's going to happen? Resultingly, it's going to be 5.45 plus 0.245 minus 0.008 gives you 5.687%. What is it going to be? It's going to be 5.687%. So if you want to talk about the borrower, this is how it is going to be from the perspective of the borrower. Now think from the perspective of the lender. So what is the lender going to do? He is actually going to buy a call and he's going to sell the floor. So if he buys the call, um, 5.25%, floor is going to be at 5.45%. We know this is basically uh, the net cost is going to be 5.25% is the income that they are going to receive minus 0.008% is the premium that they would pay plus 0.245% is the premium that they will receive because they're going to be selling the floor. It's sell put. They're going to be selling the put options. So hence resultingly, it's an income, it's an expense, it's an income. So what are you going to get? You're going to get what? Five point four eight seven percent is going to be your net impact. So think about it. If you are a borrower, it's going to be a bit different. If you are a lender, the things are going to be a bit different. So basically, this is a video which actually covers up the interest rate callers. Uh, there's going to be a part two of this video where I'm going to be covering the interest rate swaps. So I hope that you people uh, understood the concept of an interest rate caller. It's a transaction that's being undertaken to ensure that we are able to reduce uh, the cost of the option premiums.